All right, so what we're working on right now, we're working on a new concept. It's called pitch works. It's like, you know, pitching the works and it's the dot connector. So we are looking at most record producers looking for the next best artist. So we're going to be looking for the next person who wants to be the next artist and has exceptional and unique talent. The next person who wants to be a recording engineer and truly loves it and willing to put in the time to learn. We are looking for the next young guy who, or girl who also wants to be a studio engineer but does not have the equipment or the skill. We are looking for the next person who also can write songs and needs to be tutored and need to learn. And we are looking for the next person who wants to be a record producer and willing to put in the work to learn and understand. We are going to provide them with creative space and we are going to just cross the T's and dot the I's and those who require teachings and learning and training will provide it to them. Obviously, it's going to be business structured and just go forward and hopefully look at the next generation of potential creators out there who see things a little bit different from what is happening now and want to do exactly what you and I love to see, though. Just having great music being made that 30, 20 years from now, they can be played and can be monetized. We have, we have the room set up already. We have the equipment in it. I'm just to just put all the documentation together so you know it can be explained and understood easy. And one of the things we plan to do that maybe every three, four, five months we'll keep a like a you know stage show at Windsor Avenue to showcase the new upcoming talent and bring you know bring in the media and people and probably stream it and you know do something so the world see what what's out there and what's coming and what is still possible to happen. I mean, I said to people, like, look, if, if after 35 years after his death, Bob Marley is selling more records than nearly every reggae Jamaican artist put together. Something is right there and not as right now. So we need to go back to basic and do some kind of research and see what, you know, we need to do. So 30 years from now, a lot more than what is being created will be, stand, will be there to stand up and make us proud as a culture and as a people. It's a multiplicity of different things. I mean, people emulate people who are successful and people try to sound like other people and, okay, Rabbi Shakespeare played this way and he, has, he uses this bass guitar, let me get one. Cleve uses this drum, let me get one. There's a whole lot of things. And, you know, success follows success. I mean, why the um, alpha thing or the Edna Manley thing come into play? Those are the only institutions that are there that offer structured training, you know? So, I mean, so it kind of is the next crop of real musicians coming out. Well, there's a whole lot of persons who still are self-taught and even people from the old school of my era and all of that is there and they have nothing doing to. So I think a best, a good model would be a blend of the old and the young and the past and the present and, you know, Try, don't follow. Don't even try to lead. Just try to do what you're doing and do it differently and do it to the best of your ability. Like I tell somebody, a good engineer, right? A good engineer will mix in by time. A great engineer mixes by sound. You know, you don't go in the studio and say, I have to mix this in two hours. You should be able to mix it as long as it takes to mix it. If you're going to do your vocals, you don't tell me, oh, no, man. You don't have to sing it over, just take Pro Tools and play about the same and just put it in it. No, you, you need to get people giving you their best, you know, and you need to hear the difference in things. But I don't believe people are this current generation of the time and are willing or understand that these little things make things so different and unique in the long run. I'm not sure they do. It's the willingness to learn and advance. Yep. No, I they have to really have that drive to to advance their craft. I don't think anyone is really doing that, like paying enough attention to really say, well, it's starting to sound like this guy or that guy. I think what is happening is the reverse. They want to sound like that guy or that recording. Because if this is what is being played and playing in the dance hall or play anywhere, they want to get the play to or get to be in that groove and that you know, favorite spot. So they want, they try to sound and do like what is out there rather than being different. Difference usually takes a lot 
to catch on, you know? And I think this whole thing of juggling, you know, rhythm, different artists, man, the rhythm and all of that, I think that added a little down time to the whole thing because it's so much things trying to sound like so much things to fit in so much, so much things that it can be played along. Then you lose, you lose differences because you're trying to fit in rather than try to expand your creativity so you can't get caught there. Yeah. The, the the whole rhythm thing, it's played out right now. Oh yes, long time. Yeah. You only put someone on an on a rhythm if it if it's gonna work. Don't yeah. do it because you want to release a entire album with the but same that's, rhythm. That's what's know? happening. And, and and again, can you imagine a producer or somebody goes to an artist and says, um, you know, I we have a rhythm I juggle them why you do a song for it. The first thing they say, who else step on the rhythm? So if them you're a high profile artist, yes, I will, you know. So I mean, like, that don't make sense. Why don't you be you be if you like the rhythm, that's the first thing, then you decide, okay, I think I would like to be a part of this, you know? And and they just have so much contradictory points that seem to be the standard or too much of the standard. For example, a producer go to an artist and say, I would like you to do something for me. The artist say yes, X amount of money. The artist turn up at the studio at the day. There's two things them know going happen. The artist know him going get X amount of money. The producer know going get a song from the artist. Don't know what he's going to get enough. So okay, that's kind of that don't make no sense to me, eh? And then there's the other point where someone you know said that okay, I am the producer and me produce this and that and. Probably, he probably is an opportunist, not necessarily a producer. John give him the rhythm, Tom Vice on it, the engineer organized it, put it together, and okay, I'm a record producer. And, and there's another stupid thing again that I have heard, and it is stupid if this is the course of, whenever this course of action is taken. A writer, could be an artist, goes to, a, goes to an artist and says, look, I have a song here that I think you can sing. I think it can be a great song. So if he says to him, why well, I'm going to sing people tuning or come on and get my publishing myself. Usually, no, it's one of the, if he if him don't listen to the song and say that, it's one of the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Because I'll tell you why. You know, you hear the song yet? You don't know how good or bad it is. In the real world, the biggest artists want songs on the biggest writers. Everybody, them listen to songs daily, you know to find a great song to hit, you know? The next thing a man says doing a project with an artist, right? And okay, I want to do an album with you. You're the 10 songs. He records 10 songs to choose 10 songs from. That's not how it really works. You record more songs that listen to what, you know, we have whole for, we have the fundamental problem in our industry is that two, two things. One, too much persons take perception to be a reality. And anytime it don't turn out to them want it, somebody a thief, somebody a liar. The other thing is that too much people who don't know learn from people who never know. And them are tell people who want to learn and them go tell somebody else who don't know. So you get a whole distorted sense of not good sense or decision or practice or experience being passed on by persons who is just spending misinformation, sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. Because some people, it depends who tell you something, how much you take it to be gospel. While to me, the facts is the facts. I have a fact find and I have to be clear if it don't make sense. You know, I need clarity, you know, and that's why I go about what I'm doing. And then there's there's people that that just refuse to play the game fair. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I see them every day. Uh, too much of the well-known established music producers. They get a young kid who build a rhythm. Somebody sing a song from it and they go and register the song as if they are the copyright owner and claim, but me buy the rhythm. So I said, yeah, you buy the rhythm. You want the rhythm. You want the master. You don't want the people's publishing. And those who know and do it are playing thief. Those who don't know, I mean, they need to know and need to learn, need to understand. And that is a big problem. Big, big thiefing problem. Producers stealing copyrights of musicians. So what I, when sometimes when it comes to me, you know, because another part of my life, I'm a music publisher too. So I said to the person, okay, you pay the, the artist to sing him song. You pay the youth for, for play the rhythm. So why you don't say you own the artist's song, but you own the musician rhythm? 
the copyright. I can't get an answer for that up to now. I say it's the same thing. You pay two different persons for two different elements contained in a right, but you choose to try to take advantage of one and not of the other. You know? So you are correct. It's just, we have all of serious, serious problems that needs to be resolved, and they are not difficult to resolve, you know? You can, you can tell the difference when someone was there guiding the recording along compared to now where it's just it's just one guy handling everything yeah man, because it's a ego thing you know i i there's a word that i refer to it it's the me factor they want to say i me produce it i me write it i my studio i me mix it I'm me i'm a manager me this me that me that and they're acting in many capacities for which they are not competent and competent people are out you're dying for work and that is where the problem lies. Because technology, you can buy any equipment you want to buy, put it in your bathroom or your phone cover. Say, me have my studio, my studio, me have the engineer, do anything. But when it goes outside and it is played alongside or something, it's like night and day. This is why many record companies tell people, boy, you know, we need to go make Tom mix it. We need to have it remixed. Because, you know, recording music production is a science. Some people just, it's kind of like, Artists were usually managed once. Now they are the manager themselves. They tell people what, you, what they want to be done. People are being produced. Now, be, now it is much more artist driven. So they don't take talk or guidance or advice because them crew and everybody around them say, yeah, man, wicked man, I murder. So mash up the place. So their worst friends become their best enemies because they are not getting enough honest criticisms. There are a few of them still out there willing to learn and to listen and will, you know, actually recognize when and where they are faulted. But not a lot of them, not enough of them. And I, I'll, I'll add something else to you. Jamaica's greatest era of musical innovation was when we had creative collaborations. When you had multiple minds and persons coming together in one space at the same time, and all creative energies flowing, putting things together. Right now, as you say, one man, one dimension, and he's good. He's good, but the music ain't. Uh-uh. Yeah. It, it's kind of the next thing, you know, as you talk music would answer well, so. It's kind of like, it is nearly every artist's dream to say, um, I am going to do my album. And when somebody come to me, and what do you think? And I, I said to him, say, why do you want to do an album? Have you done any single? He said, no. He said, then if you can't make one good song, why is somebody going to want 10 of you? Put the time and the effort and your resource and make a good song first. And then you try to think about an album. So it's kind of like, you know, part of the fears of saying I am an artist, I have my album, you know? And, you know, nine out of 10, it could be crappy, you know? Yeah. I mean, sometime last year, the Jamaica Broadcast, the Broadcasting Commission did this thing where they said, look, the radio can't play any more chopper music and gun music and daddy daddy. What was ironic, and I'll send you an email on it, right? 26 years ago, myself, Mikey Bennett, and Dr. Lakeim Simaj, we, we kept an event at Anchor Studios called the Book of Life, where we had everybody come together to recognize that, look, the content of the music is deteriorating. We're going down a road that we need to have a greater sense of responsibility. Let's all commit to ourselves to try a bit more responsible and conscious and, you know, stay back to the norms. And 96 people attended and about 20 people, you know, gave speeches and about 96 persons signed the document confirming that, yes, we'll do what we want to do. 26 years later, Broadcasting Commission have to put the foot down. And some people I hear, are, artists are saying, that they are trying to tell them what to say. And that's not true. And they are saying to them, we will not be playing these things on radio when it is said. They are not telling them that you must say what you want to say. Them just say, we have drawn a line. But the line draw a long time. But they don't recognize it. Because, for example, I mean, radio is not going to play certain things of beyond even explicitly sexual or slanderous or murderous. They have a line that they drew a long time. You just know another line has been drawn in terms of, you know, what they call the chopper music and the gun killing songs. But the line draw a long time and nobody's telling them what to say. 
then they're saying on the radio we'll not be paying certain things. Them still have all the other avenues. They're not telling them what to play. Yeah. Them just say, I know a medium we're not facilitated certain things. They've banned songs from the radio forever, you know? So yeah, that it but it, it never it never stopped. It never no. stopped anyone from doing it. And you and I also need you and I also need to understand that it is beyond our understanding. So we should even try to understand how and or why it is as is. We have a generation of people out there, this is what they want to hear or, or this motivates them. My argument, you know, when people would saying that no man is just music and this is not what they mean. So I said to someone, say, look, if you are a loving person when you hear great love songs and or you're a religious person, you hear great, you know, spiritual songs and it it lifts you, it builds you up, you put you in a good space. Then if you're a murderer or criminal or you have that kind of intent and when you hear these songs in praises of murder and criminality, wouldn't it also do something for you? Of course, that's just logic and common sense. So if we just cut down and, you know, try and get back to basics and then, you know, you hear them complain and quarrel when you see foreign group a win Grammy and all them thing, that thing when we have lost, you know, the, the core content, you know, of, of what made us and put us where we are. My preaching is that quality of content is king. And if you don't realize that, we'll find out. It, it, it's a process that people need to understand how it works before you start complaining. Because these people are complaining, they are not even a member of the academy, you know? Yep. And then you are complaining, you know? So, is to me, all who win should have won, and the right person won. That is how I see it. And let's let's say, if you don't want foreigners win, let's make some better music than what won, or music that will greater impact the world next time. And don't believe you can make it and do it, join the academy and self-producing and do have a PR team who will navigate those halls to show you when to put it out, when to, when to you know, have it be nominated and what is the process. You have to understand the process also. What they call the the whole revival thing. I never thought that that was good enough because it was all sampling. They were just sampling back old Sly and Robbie productions. Protege's latest album, he sampled "Late at Night" by Pam Hall. That's my nice song. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I turned it off. I said no. <laughs> That's one of those songs you do not touch. I think one of the things, you know, is that so many artists are in in charge of their own destiny, both financially and creatively, and they don't have the, in many, in too many cases, the independence of another production creative person, who, you know, who is going to say no, yes, no, like I said to you. Any song I'm going to record, I have to approve the song before we go anywhere. Because if I don't feel it, I don't hear it, I would, or I, I see logical reasons to have a change or a recommendation, I'm going to put it in. And if it's, if it's not going to be accepted, they're just thrown out willy-nilly, I will not be involved in the project. But the persons who created all of those great music are still around. So it's just a matter of people just finding a way to bridge the gap with the old and the new and it might get us a little bit closer to where, you know, we can be. Because, I mean, we'll never be where we work, and that is gone. But we still can be. And as I tell you, quality of content is king. Reggae was unique to the message because it related to so much cultures and so much all of that, all of that. But you don't have that those kind of messages going on now. You don't have those kind of things that resonating with people who it could and should. It's just, you know, maybe we ourselves have to just say, Let's cherish what we had and recognize so we can't change what is happening right now, you know? Are those of us who have the ability to change, let's continue doing what we think and what we feel, you know? And just hope it picks up somewhere somehow. Yeah. If not, it's going to be a lot more of the same. I appreciate you taking the time out. Yeah, man. Thank you. I mean, it's part of my, you know, giving back to say, you know, whenever I can, wherever I can, you know, once it makes good sense, it's not... You know, people just looking likes and, you know, beating and bashing down people. Mm -hmm. Anything for us to arrive at, you know, holding the flag up high and keeping the music going, I, I, I'm, I'm in. I'm in.